Hello everybody. Welcome back to NIOS Made Easy. This is chapter one from painting secondary board. The chapter is history and appreciation of art from 3000 BC to 600 AD. This chapter can be divided into two logical parts. The first one is the study of artifacts and the second part is the study of the history around these artifacts like the dynasties that ruled around that time, the civilizations, etc. Let's get started. The three artifacts that we will be studying in this chapter are the first one is the dancing girl. The second one is the Rampurva bull capital and then black princess. We are going to study three artifacts. The dancing girl dates back to 3000 BC which dates back to the Harappan period. The second one is the Rampurva bull capital and this dates back to 300 century BC. And finally, we study the black princess. This was done during the second century AD to the sixth century AD. Let's go through it one by one. These notes that I am referring to for this video highlight the most important points in that specific topic. It's organized in the form of a table, which will help you to remember things easily and also to recall these points faster. Let us go to the first uh, statue here, that is the dancing girl. It's a metal statue and it dates back to the Harappan period, that is 3000 BC. It was found in the site called as Mohenjo-daro. This statue is four inches in height. She is lanky, thin and rhythmic. Lanky also means thin and it looks awkward. That's the meaning. She is standing in a very curious posture. Her right hand is on her waist, whereas her left hand is placed on her thighs. Her hair is tied in a bun, which is a contemporary hairstyle. She is standing in a curious posture. She is shown without clothes and on her left hand, she is wearing bangles till her shoulder. I also want to bring to your attention that the questions that will appear in the exam will be of two marks and maximum is of three. The maximum is three mark questions. So it will be good enough if you write around five to six points, which I have tried to cover here in these notes. The next one is the Rampurva bull capital. It is called as Rampurva bull capital because it was found in this place called as Rampurva. It is made of polished sandstone and it dates back to the Mauryan times. That is the third century BC. This bull capital is seven feet in height. If you look back at the pillars that were erected during the Mauryan times, they basically had three parts. The first bottommost portion was the base. Then there was a shaft and on top was what was called as the capital. The capital was some animal figure. Out of the popular capitals found during the Mauryan period, especially the Ashokan period, the bull capital was the most popular. This bull stands on an inverted lotus and between the lotus and the bull, there is something called as an abacus. This abacus has plant designs on it. Moving on to the last artifact discussed in this chapter, it is called as the Black Princess. Black Princess is a wall painting and it is found inside the Ajanta Caves. The Ajanta Caves were done during the Gupta Vakataka period between the 2nd century AD and the 6th century AD. The Black Princess painting is 20 feet by 6 feet in size and the traditional technique of the tempura has been used to do this painting. Free flowing lines have been used and subtle rhythms are given to the body contours. We can see that there is a slight tilt in her face. All the colors that have been used in this painting are earthen colors 
and there is no loudness to it they are all very sober and earthen colors speaking about the ajanta paintings most of the ajanta paintings were religious in nature there are totally around 30 caves inside the ajanta caves the ajanta caves were of two types one is the chaityas and the other is called as the viharas the chaityas were used as worshiping places while the viharas were used as monasteries the ajanta paintings were done in due in two phases one is called as the hinayana and the other is called as the mahayana hinayana was the time when buddha was where buddha paintings were represented as symbols whereas in the in the face mahayana buddha is represented as a human most of the ajanta paintings specifically were done during the vakataka that is the gupta vakataka period so these are the three artifacts that are covered in this chapter and the points have been discussed let us move on to the history behind these artifacts when we speak of the dancing girl the dancing girl dates back to the harappan period so let us look at the harappan civilization or which is also called as the indus valley civilization so these are some of the questions which are popular and many of these questions have appeared in the previous year board papers as well this question is about writing some short notes on the indus valley civilization and what are the works that were done during that time so the indus valley civilization is also known as the harappan civilization this civilization flourished between 2500 bc and 1750 bc after which it slowly declined the main sites of the civilization are harappa and mohenjo daro the civilization not just limited itself to the indus river basin but it extended even beyond the indus river basin a lot of arts and antiques have been found during this period they include potteries seals jewelry tools toys statues etc this shows that the craftsmen of the indus valley civilization were highly skilled the next question is to describe the dancing girl and specifically her posture she is standing in a very curious posture and she is lanky thin and looks rhythmic in her character unlike the goddess statues that were made during the indus valley during the harappan period this lady is shown in a contemporary style with her hair tied in a bun she is shown in a resting posture where her right hand is on her waist and her left hand is placed on her left thigh this uh, statue reflects the artistic skills of the indus valley craftsmen because this statue is only 4 inches in height but it looks like it is a large statue the next question is to discuss the mauryan art the rampurva bull capital was done during the mauryan period so we are also trying to understand the art during the mauryan times the mauryan period actually marked the beginning of the indian history one of the great kings in this dynasty was king ashoka the great he contributed a lot for developing the art and architecture after the war of kalinga he became a follower of buddhism and he elected pillars all around his empire to spread the teachings of lord buddha one of the most important qualities of the pillars that have come during the ashokan period is that they are all highly polished so it is a treasure to our indian art this is a period where folk art also was encouraged in the form of making mother goddess figures moving on is the gupta period the ajanta paintings the black princess this were all done during the gupta period gupta period is known as the golden period or the classical period of indian history 
so we'll have to write why is it called so we call the gupta period as the classical period or the golden period of indian his uh, indian history because a lot of art centers were encouraged and developed during this time example mathura sarnath ujjain etc the sculptures that were done during that time show that there was a perfect balance and blending it had style we could see the skill and the mastery and the imagination of the artisans who actually did it most of the sculptures and the paintings that were done during that time were religious and secular in nature the most famous ajanta paintings were done during this period apart from that there were also cave and temple sculptures that were also done under the rule of the guptas there was a development or maybe an overall development in couple of fields like arts and science as well we saw legendary personalities like kalidasa aryabhatta and varaha mihira during this time this is the reason why we call the gupta period as the golden period of indian history moving on we are looking at the sculptures during the mauryan times and why were the, why were they special uh, this is uh, similar to the question we saw earlier so ashoka the great embraced buddhism after the war of kalinga after which he did a lot of benevolent works and he contributed to the art and architecture after he became a follower of buddhism he erected pillars all around his empire to spread the teachings of lord buddha he also engraved edicts and teachings of buddha on pillars rock surfaces and tablets the most important quality of sculptures at this time were they were all highly polished and this technique of polishing sculptures were learned from the sculptors who came in from the middle east so this became a characteristic feature of the sculptures during the mauryan times along with the mauryans we also saw the kushans ruling ruling for a while so the kushans were the people who came from outside of india and they helped art and architecture progress during their time during this time we saw sculptured portraiture for the very first time and we saw it develop so that is the contribution that came in with the kushans what are the characteristics of the gupta painting so uh, in the gupta period whatever paintings were done uh, the human figures were more refined as in there was a slight tilt in the lip the figures were all more rounded the carvings were accurate which became the main stylish stamp of the guptas these paintings were religious in nature and the famous ajanta paintings were done during this period that is the gupta vakataka period so that is the reason why the gupta period is considered to be the golden period in art history with this we have looked at all the questions that is the terminal exercise questions of chapter 1 in our next session let us look at some of the questions from this chapter that has appeared in our previous board papers thank you so much for watching